Alaska! Oh, it's a oh. big one! Get him! <laughs> Alright guys, our Alaskan cruise is coming to an end. But, oh my god, was this... Oh. Like it was a trip of a lifetime. I mean, we went salmon fishing, we went halibut fishing, there were lumberjacks involved. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, before we came here, oh my God, we were so overwhelmed with what excursions to do, where to go, what to see, what to do, what to wear. Because we had all those questions, we wanna help you guys out when it comes to planning your Alaskan cruise. So we're gonna cover all those questions right now. By the way, guys, if you're thinking of booking a trip to Alaska, uh, check out the link either up there or up there uh, for a little bit more information. Or right there. Or right there. All right, first off, Alaska is big, it's beautiful, it's temperamental. I mean, the weather can change day to day, almost hour to hour. So one of the first things is be sure to pack layers. And the other thing is you might want to actually invest in a full rain suit. I'm talking like a Heli Hansen jacket and pants, and that is something that I actually wish I had rainproof pants while I was here. That's my one regret. Also, make sure your boots are waterproof because you don't want to be sloshing around in some Nike sneakers and have wet feet the entire day. So for a full list of all the gear that we recommend and stuff that we brought, just click the link either there or there and uh, take a look out at our blog. So a fun fact, while you're yeah. fishing, there are oh, bald eagles wow. in the trees waiting for us to catch something and dive in and grab it because they're lazy. They're lazy. <laughs> animals but they're smart. And they're hungry. It's gonna rain. Finally came in. Yesterday was all sunshine and smiles. Today it's gonna be rain clouds and rain jackets I think. We were told to expect rain at any moment in time when we were in Alaska so we came prepared. We have our rain jackets. Well they're technically in my bag right now because I didn't know it was raining outside but we're prepared. It's still stunning. The second big question that we had when booking our Alaskan cruise was what excursions should we do? Because there are so many activities in every single port. Now, each port is gonna be known for a different activity. For example, Ketchikan is gonna be known for salmon fishing, and Juneau is gonna be known for the Mendenhall Glacier and dog sledding. The reason you come to Alaska is to walk on a glacier, catch salmon and fresh halibut in the ocean, and watch sea life up close and personal. A lot of these excursions sell out, so we would highly recommend booking them in advance. And here are our favorite top recommendations for excursions on your Alaskan cruise going salmon fishing in Ketchikan, walking on the Mendenhall Glacier in Juneau by either dog sled or doing an ice fall hike, fishing for halibut on the icy strait. I mean, this is where we actually pulled in like 110 pound halibut. Now, for those of your animal lovers, we actually let that one go. Yay! And then the last thing is the Bears of Anon in Wrangell. Now, if your boat stops here, you're gonna wanna book this thing as soon as you decide to book your trip because they only allow 60 permits a day. We didn't get to do it, but it was something that I've always wanted to do. So I don't have any footage or can talk about it personally, but it is a highly recommended thing to do if you're a photographer or if you just want to see bears in the wild. All right guys, so we're actually uh, on a whale watching and otter tour. Sorry, and, <laughs> boat moved. <laughs> and uh, we finally had some luck. Oh, there's some whales out there right now. So and we've it's, seen sea otters and yeah, whales so and far. And bald eagles. And bald eagles. And a porpoise. We've seen lots of animals out here. Oh, over here. Alaskan cruises are all about the excursions. Unlike in the Caribbean where you can go tour a town and hang out on a beach all day, you're not going to do that here. You're going to want something to do. So just be sure to add, you know, a good amount into your budget for the excursions because you're going to want to do something almost every single day. So besides Ketchikan and Juneau, most of the other towns are really small and there's not much to do. <laughs> and by really small, we mean really small. I mean like Wrangell. Oh my God. That, we walked around that in like 30 seconds, turned around and got right back on the boat. Yeah. So if you don't have any activities planned for those smaller port days, there's not going to be much to do. So either have something planned or enjoy a day on the boat at yeah. leisure. Maybe go to the spa. <laughs> but Juneau, loved that town. Ketchikan, yeah. thought it was awesome. Ketchikan, you got to go to the Alaska Fish Shop get the what was it like the sampler oh yeah the sampler so it was um it was cod it was halibut and salmon oh and so halibut was the best even though we just caught some salmon we love the halibut yes i mean the other question we had was what size ship to book now you're gonna have big huge ships that are basically 
floating cities that have 3,000 people on board. Ours was the Azamar Quest, which was about 600 people. So it's a good mid-sized ship. I mean, there were lots of activities on board. There was a pool. There was a hot tub. Um, all of our food was included. and Yeah, they had alcohol included. But if you wanted something nicer, like a Aperol Spritz or some nice champagne and wine, you had to pay a little extra or get the drink package. Which we did. So <laughs> that's something else to check in is when you're looking into your boat, you want to see it might say everything's included, but then they might upsell you on other stuff. One of the best things we've ever done in our that entire lives. So crazy. That was beautiful. So beautiful. I feel like I cried. Good thing I have sunglasses on. <laughs> now it's time to hike. Now that we're at the end of our trip, I'm trying to look back and think, is there anything that I would have done differently? What would I have changed? <laughs> And I have to say that even though we were on a mid-sized ship, which was very high-end and it was a luxury ship, I would probably skew more towards a smaller ship such as the Silver Sea, which has 100 to 200 people on the ship. Just because you get a more exclusive, intimate feeling. I mean, you go to smaller ports as well. Yes. So if you're on a smaller ship, you can navigate in the inside passage and you don't have to go out to sea as much. You can stay overnight, which would have been a great thing. I would have loved to stay overnight in a place like Juno or Ketchikan and kind of explore the bars and the nightlife a little bit more there. But we had to get back on the ship, so that was kind of a downer. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty standard when it comes to most mid-sized to large cruise ships. And I think the only other thing that I regret was not packing rain pants. I had a nice <laughs> rain jacket, but when we were fishing for halibut, got a little damp and a little chilly. But everything else, you know, I loved it. I had a blast. Yeah, because guys, I mean, even if it's summer and you think it's going to be 24 hours of sunlight here, well, guess what? It's going to rain too. I'm sorry, but it's going to happen. So just the weather here changes at the drop of a hat. <laughs> As always, I'm Scott. <laughs> and I'm Colette. And we are Romero. And if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe below. That's right. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye.